Alright guys, here we go. So here we'll be looking to perform a Z transform in a geometric sequence. Now the key idea is, is to firstly define a Z transform. Well, you can think of it as simply a function okay, at some point, let's say a n, where it's, it's written as an infinite sequence. So we could say that the sum of a n dot z to power minus n is the full definition of the z n. And this is convenient because this can work in geometric sequence if a n was constant. And that's what we're going to do. So we can immediately say that to perform a geometric uh, z transform in a geometric sequence, we have to firstly assume that the first term a n for all n values is the same value. So let's look at this quick example here. So it tells us to firstly use the definition of the Z transform to derive the Z transform of the sequence defined by the following. Now this tells us that when n is 0 and 1, the default value for a is 0. But when n is greater than or equal to 2, i.e. 2, 3, 4 onwards, the a n term is equal to 2. Now, the proof is that we, we, we're, going, we're going to show that this sequence can be Z transformed into something very simple like that. Now, first things first, let's write down the definition, yeah? So we saw in the previous page is this one. So we can just put it right here. So it's an infinite sum. And now let's go ahead and expand this, yeah? Let's, let's, put, let's plug in values for n equals 0, 1, 2, and onwards. So when you plug in n equals 0, you're going to have a 0, which is going to be 0. Next one, when you plug in the next term, n is 1, you're going to have 0 again. And then when you plug in n equals 2, look what happens now. You're going to get 2 z to the power negative 2. And again, if you plug in n equals 3, you get the same thing. But instead of uh, n being 2, it will be 3. And of course, this follows on forever. So this is going to be infinite. Now, before we do this, we need to figure out what is the definition of a geometric sequence. Well, let's have a look at some quick overview. We can say that the sum of the first n terms in the geometric sequence is given by this. So this denotes the sum where n a is the first term and r is the common ratio. So if you know the first term and the common ratio, you can pretty much deduce it. Now this is for a finite sequence. So this is when you end at some point. But we, 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 we're, conf we're practically concerned about an infinite sum. So the infinite sum, so one that goes on forever, literally this is when this becomes 0 r to power n. So when n becomes really big, the ratio is very tiny. So this is the very simple formula. So it's the first term over one minus the common ratio. Now let's go back to a sequence, yeah? So let's go ahead and cut this one short. So ignoring the zeros, yeah? It's gonna be reduced to this. So we can clearly see that the first term is over here, two z to the negative two, so that is our a term. And now the common ratio is literally a sequence when you divide term by term, yeah? By the previous term. So a bit like this. So the second term over the first term. This will give us a common ratio r. And then simplifying this one, you'll get z to the negative 1. If you did another term, for instance, 2z to the negative 4 over 2z to the negative 3, that cancels down to z to the negative 1, and so on. So this is this is the common ratio across the sequence. Now all you do is literally just smash into the formula. So we're going to have now, hence, that the, the z transform at some point a n, not the same a by the way, is going to be 2z to the negative 2 over 1 minus z to the negative 1. And that's it. That's literally z transformed. Easy. So to, just to summarize this, you have to just pretty much use the sequence, plug it in, and then apply the geometric infinite sequence formula. And doing so, you're going to get this result. And by the way, if you don't like this too much, you can just pull out, this, can be, this z to negative 2 can be written out as 1 over z squared. And then tidying up, you should get a result like this. Just to see what it actually looks like if you if you really want to know, z to negative two. So this is the same as um, two over z squared, and then we're left with one over one minus z to negative one, and then just multiplying z squared across, you should get. Let's have a look. And multiplying two over one, so z squared times one is z squared, z squared times z to the negative one. So here you add the power. So two two plus minus one is just one, so be minus z to the one. And then factorize z out and you get this result here and that's it guys i hope this video helped and you know just want to say thank you for watching and of course i would like you guys to come back to my other videos and yeah never and please don't forget to subscribe like and share this with your friends yeah i just want to try and share this to everybody and look forward to more problems anyway see you guys next time and ciao